Yeah, guys, so we're now at the German Railway Museum. DB Museum. And uh, it actually looks huge. It's in a really nice building, so let's go check it out. Yeah, so they actually start uh, logically in chronological order at the beginning of the 1800s here. And it's pretty neat. The first thing we have is a, uh, looks like either a coal car or some kind of, uh, some kind of cargo car. And then over here they have some models and mock-ups of the very early, early steam and probably also oil-burning locomotives. And then I don't picture Germany as much as a, much of a frontier country like in the old west of the U.S. that you might, uh, you might run into, but nonetheless. Similar kind of setups here. And here they've got a passenger coach with a model of a model of a passenger coach and a model of a train station in an old town in Germany, which is really cool. And some uh, some porcelain ceramics of the period. Very cool over here, guys. They have some authentic, uh, authentic cars through the through the period here. So this is an old. So actually, come down. I think we can walk through here. This is actually an old, uh, an old steam locomotive. It's been beautifully restored. On the left, we have not such an old, uh, not such an old train. But as we walk through here, now I'm really glad we came here. I'm really glad we got this city card. So this was a, this was an older locomotive, and then here, uh, this is however you pronounce that. <laughs> That's what we're looking at here. A, uh, there's a depiction of how, how steam locomotives work with the uh, piston cylinder and the uh, and the crankshaft there. And here's a here's a shot inside the futuristic passenger car. Uh, Ice three, I guess, is what that is. Built in 1995. Not so futuristic, but uh, more futuristic than. More futuristic than these guys here. Yeah, this is this is very very cool. I love seeing old old locomotives and old technology. BV Norgadu from 1853. That's probably not how you pronounce that, but you'll forgive me. Here's the uh, the engineer's compartment right here, and it looks looks almost pristine compared to how it would have looked back in the day. There would have been oil and grease and all sorts of all sorts of dirt and dirt and soot there, but it's obviously been pristinely restored for museum display. This one was built in 1906. Very, very cool, and this guy's really large. This one was probably not for passenger service. This would have been this would have been a freight locomotive. And on the right is a is a Phoenix, whatever Phoenix branding is. Actually, we missed the nameplate on it, so we'll go grab that there. That's what this guy is, built in 1863. Again, not a not a hint of oil or grease on there. Pristine museum restoration condition. And this one, I think, here's the official nameplate on this guy. Built in 1906. 
very, very, very cool. And here's kind of a, uh, here's kind of, it's a flat 2D, but it, it actually looks 3D like you're in the Central Railway Hall. And uh, with the candle headlights. And uh, over here we have a couple passenger cars. Bismarck. Not sure if these would have been for, for uh, royalty or just first class passengers, but very cool. Yeah, guys, so here we got a billy goat and a train car, and it looks like Uncle Jesse from the Dukes of Hazard here. I don't know what he's doing here, but very cool. I love these. I don't know if these are, I don't know if these are recreations or models, or if they were salesman samples, or maybe engineering constructions to help them at the time, because of course they didn't have, they didn't have CAD packages and 3D modeling software like we do today. But um, yeah, and over in these, over in these room, we've got more of the same, but they're all, they're all unbelievably cool. You know, you'd love to. You'd love to have just one of these in your collection, and uh, they have a whole bunch of them. This is kind of like a passenger car with a modified caboose there for, uh, for service. And then over here, looks like they've got some more engines and uh, models of engines anyway in here. Over here we've got uh, an electric railway car. Here, the the HO scaled version of uh, of what we've been looking at. And you can actually overlook the room that we were just in from up here. And actually, this is very cool. This shows a uh, this shows an engine being serviced in the roundhouse, so they actually have a, uh, a special lift to change out the uh, change out the set of wheels there, which is cool. And here we got some uh, some piping that they would have used for boiler tubes, along with either you know, the notebook or bill material or something like that. Yeah, so here's a couple more models here, and, uh, and uh, actually a railway-mounted crane. And down here we've got some uh, cash registers and ticket machines and and uh, lanterns that were used in the. Uh... Yeah, so here's. Here's an old telephone, guys, and what I like about this is they actually have, they actually have a very old dialer here. I wonder how many, how many of you have ever actually seen a rotary dial phone. I had one of these in my house back when I was a kid, albeit on a, on a much more modern telephone, but rotary dial nonetheless. Yeah, so this is pretty cool, guys. I, I'm, I'm gonna have to do some, uh, some research and find out why these things actually even exist. My best guess is that they were either, uh, they must have been engineering models for the time. Here we have the front of a, a full-scale train and then another, what I think is an engineering model behind us. Uh, this actually almost looks like a, uh, a 210 which is a decapod, which was built by, uh, built by uh, the Baldwin Locomotive Works in Philadelphia, but, but, um, that's definitely not a Baldwin, but it is a, it is a, it is a 210 zero, which is kind of a neat configuration. So, uh, so yeah, and the inter introduction of standard locomotives and the new norms. So that's what we're seeing here. Um, I'll have to do some research into why these things actually exist. 
is very interesting. These, when I say these things existing, I mean these models. Like I said, my best guess is that it has to be an engineering model because that's about the only thing that makes sense. They're far too intricate to be toys and and uh, far too impractical to be salesman samples. But the the entire museum is is littered with them, which is uh, which is very 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 cool. Yeah, guys, and of course with every every German museum, there there's a very very common common theme here so this part of the museum covers the German railway history from 1933 to 1945 and I think we've talked about that a lot today we don't need to uh, don't need to discuss that any further but, um, but they've got some uh, some railway mechanisms and, and uh, this is actually pretty cool uh, we're just talking about the fact that something like this would be far too impractical to be a to be a salesman sample. So it must be a, uh, and it's far too intricate to be a toy. So it, it must be an engineering model that was built to uh, to uh, help with the design uh, the design process. Cool locomotives and cool drawings. I imagine, of course, I'm an engineer and I work with. 3D modeling software all the time, but imagine doing this all by hand on, on paper with with pencil and nothing but circle templates and rulers and compasses and, and uh, French curves and, and things of that nature. It'd be, it'd be unbelievably impractical compared to today's standards. And again, we got some more uh, unique uh, very unique thing here. So this would be, these would be uh, dollies to transport the the uh, the uh, the engine over over um, over road as opposed to on railways. You can see how the rail cars sit on the dollies and then they tow it around. Pretty neat. Yeah, guys. So they have this section is like 45 to 89, and they had a slide up that said. This is uh, this is the oldest railway museum in the world. I couldn't take the slide because it was like a never-ending slideshow. But you'll take my uh, you'll take my word for it. Here's that ice train that we saw down there. Yeah, these are all very cool. And those are probably the trucks of the ice train, the airbag suspension, probably electric motor drive. Yeah, for sure. Fortunately, we're running into, and here's a ship here, which is also very cool, transporting oil cars on the ship in boxcars, which is pretty neat. Fortunately, we're running into the problem that we ran into in Linz last year, where there's just not enough time to, uh, just not enough time to walk around and do everything. Here we have an early computer and an early ticket station. Not early, but not modern like today. Yeah, guys, so this is pretty neat in the next room here. I see where it says USSR zone. I'm guessing these are from uh, Checkpoint Charlie or very near Checkpoint Charlie, and then they have a very big, uh, a very big, uh, it's probably not big, it's probably a standard size truck there, a train truck from wheels. And I'm sure this. I'm sure this will tell us where that's from, but uh, it was very neat because here they have on the floor of this room, they have uh, what I assume is Berlin, and uh, they have a tipped over, uh, tipped over lamp post there in the corner, and they talk about the Berlin blockade here. So this is probably Berlin right at the, right at the fall of the war here on the floor. So pretty, pretty cool stuff in the next room. Yeah, guys. So of course, like every good, every good railway museum, they have a, they have a model, a model railway exhibit here, which theirs is very large and very extensive, and a lot of work has gone into this. And of course, they are beautifully decorated for Christmas here as well. But uh, we'll go over here. Looks like they have a roundhouse and city and port scene and whatever. I don't know if I can 
push a button to make it move. Probably not. And it says no entry, so I guess we're not allowed to go in there. But they got uh, firefighters down here and got a bridge. And this is very, very, very cool. I imagine this is really awesome when it's running. But uh, the guy just walked out of the room. I think he uh, he's either done for the day or decided that nobody wanted to see the model trains run today. So I guess we just missed it. But uh, very neat. And on this wall, they talk about HO scale and how it's basically one one hundredth. And uh, they've got some very, very what would be very, very, very long trains if they were if they were running on a on a model railway track, which is cool. And, uh, and then behind us, they had a, another model of a uh, not a model, but what I'll call an engineering model of a of a train built in 1956 and this looks like it was a, a, a medical train or an ambulance train probably from the war so and then over here they do have a working railway exhibit that we can see and, and you can see the uh, you can see what the uh, with a camera in the front of the train there, you can see what's going on. So that's pretty cool. Just stopped. So it's a smaller display, but very cool nonetheless. And then over here, are some more, uh, some more HO railway and some tools of the trade of modern railroading. Modern model railroading, I should say. And here we've got these are either. These look like they might be N scale or maybe a little smaller cars here. And then again, fuller scale models or engineering models of, uh, of uh, yeah, these are N scale. You can see how they've made, made an N out of the cars there. And then uh, this is very cool. This is a, uh, uh, the underside of, a, uh, of the locomotive here. So it's really neat. service and shop scenes here on the left and right. And they've got little inserts that show you the assembly process and, and uh, when these are fabricated in the shop what they go through. Yeah, so that's going to do it from the DB Museum, the Transportation Museum, uh, Railway Museum here in Nuremberg. Uh, we ran into the same problem here that we ran into in the military museum in Koblenz. Specifically, we had no idea that this museum had this kind of game. This thing is unbelievable. You could spend hours and hours and hours here. And unfortunately, we've only shown you just just a glimmer of what they have to offer here. So by all means, if you're in uh, Nuremberg, grab yourself a city card and make your way over to here because it's, it's, it's well worth the money. And so with that, since we're kind of getting a little long in the day here, we're going to head over to the Christmas markets and see what's going on over there.